far as uh, the content of the gas exchange process is concerned, uh, it deals with a lot of uh, basics and also some, some mostly it's basics and some some other flow patterns of the exhaust of the inlet and the exhaust inlet air and then the exhaust gas. Uh, so we'll be seeing the inlet and the exhaust process in four stroke cycle. Uh, this had been already covered. Basically, uh, we have seen the four stroke intake stroke, which is nothing but the suction stroke, and then the compression stroke, and then we have seen uh, the power stroke, and the last one is the exhaust stroke. So, considering that, uh, uh, we, we need to study what is the different axis, different process, and uh, what are the different uh, different pattern of the the, the, the each and individual stroke which will complete the cycle and we have also seen the volumetric efficiency right? and we will slightly elaborately see the volumetric efficiency also here and uh, the flow through walls okay basically the the air the air air is coming in in the case of uh, the diesel engine air and fuel mix comes during the intake stroke in the case of a gasoline engine so how the flow pattern is happening uh, say the and the engine that also we will be seeing and, uh, and then I, I, I just to touch upon uh, this subject but I will not go in depth about uh, uh, the exhaust gas flow rate and um, temperature duration but, but I will just give you an overview and uh, you will see the scavenging in two stroke uh, engine scavenging is basically uh, you are removing the exhaust gas from the exhaust uh, system uh, to the atmosphere uh, by forcing the the air, uh, by increasing the pressure of the inlet air, and you are expelling the exhaust gas to the exhaust system. Basically, the scavenging. Uh, you will see the scavenging, and then it's types of scavenging. And uh, you know, in the case of a two-stroke engine, you don't have the ports. Okay, you have only ports. And then you have an inlet port, transfer port, port, and also the last one is uh, the exhaust port. Inlet port will allow the the uh, air mixer in the case of a diesel engine and the air fuel mixer in the case of a uh, gasoline engine and uh, transfer port will uh, transfer the air and then uh, the fuel to get compressed uh, below the piston and it is part of a combustion chamber and uh, you have one more part called the exhaust port which will uh, expel uh, the exhaust gas to the atmosphere uh, and the very important topic we will be seeing today is uh, the wall timing diagram for a two stroke four stroke diesel and gasoline engine so this is very much important okay and even with respect to exam, exam point of view also it's very important you need to draw the diagram okay uh, and i will explain that we give more focus towards uh, this wall timing diagram and we'll see what is the overlap okay so these are the overview and apart from that uh, i am also planning to cover uh, the trick uh, called the fluid motion in combustion chamber so it's basically uh, so in, in 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 the fluid motion of the combustion chamber there are different types of the turbulence type basically we are going to create the turbulence and you will be seeing the swirling motion squeeze motion tumble motion you have the different types of the combustion chambers one is a divider combustion chamber crevice uh, combustion chamber and uh, we will see some of the mathematical model and uh, the, the computer simulation and uh, some of the simulation uh, results also we will see it and uh, see this is very much important okay you have, you have to look up uh, the different types of the combustion chamber which is there in an engine okay uh, this is very much important uh, so we give more focus towards this uh, combustion chamber, different types of combustion chamber that you have. Uh, also, you give importance to the wall diagram. Okay. Uh, remaining things uh, today I will be a bit fast, but uh, okay. So first we will see the scavenging then go to the wall diagram and uh, and then uh, the the timing diagram basically. Okay. So. The scavenging is basically it is applicable for a uh, two-stroke engine basically in respect of the type it can be a gasoline or a diesel 
So here, uh, this scavenging is basically for two slow engine. Uh, what is called uh, scavenging? It is nothing but the process of removing the burnt gas gases, okay, from the combustion chamber of this engine cylinder. Uh, basically, you are expelling the exhaust gas out, okay. Uh, uh, that is called as uh, uh, scavenging. So you have uh, three types of uh, scavenging. One is uh, cross flow scavenging, gap flow and uh, loop scavenging, and the third one is uh, the uniform uh, uniform flow uh, scavenging. Uh, so you see here, uh, you are going to expel the exhaust gas to the exhaust system by forcing the inlet uh, at my inlet air with some high pressure. Okay, with, with, with with some uh, pressure system so that the, the inlet pressure it is coming from the uh, inlet air strikes and it, it pushes the exhaust thing to the to the exhaust uh, system so here the pattern is going to happen in a cross flow you're going to have the, the pattern in such a way to cross the inlet is so the blue indicates the inlet pressure and uh, the exhaust is nothing but the exhaust system going to the exhaust uh, um, uh, through the atmosphere basically and in the case of uh, the loop uh, scavenge you can see uh, this is the inlet uh, air pressure which will which will ensure that it is going to expel or uh, remove the burnt gases from the combustion chamber with some uh, striking with some pressure uh, in such a way it, it creates a loop in it okay you see this is the loop okay uh, it, it forms a loop like this and uh, it again expels and uh, in the case of uh, the, the loop scavenge system, it is a bit, uh, the, the flow is a bit slightly complicated because uh, unlike in the case of cross flow, you, you, you are striking the air which is coming to the, from the inlet uh, uh, into the combustion chamber. Uh, you see that the arrangement can be easy, and, but in the case of loop scavenge, you are going to reverse the arrangement such a way. Uh, you are going to divert it and then you are going to have it but again uh, it all depends on the designers how they want to have but uh, uh, it, they will decide which which one is the best suit of the uh, type for them for their application and in the case of uniform uh, scavenge system uh, so this is the uh, combustion chamber uh, where whatever the combustion is going to happen about the piston so uh, the combustion will happen with the help of uh, uh, both the air and fuel. The air is coming from the inlet, okay, and uh, the inlet will be operating. Uh, the, the inlet the air is coming to the system with the help of inlet port, and you have a transfer port which will transfer uh, the inlet air and uh, the, the air fuel mixture will happen. The combustion will happen uh, above the piston, basically in the which is nothing but the combustion chamber, and you have one more part, port called exhaust port, which will expel exhaust gas to the atmosphere so here uh, the, the uniform scavenging system uh, the flow is going to happen uniformly across this combustion chamber and uh, you're going to burn you're going to remove the burn gases from the combustion chamber to the flood of uh, the atmosphere so you have these three types uh, and uh, these three types is very well explained in the john b Raymond in the chapter six uh, you, you can you can see that for more explanation. Just I have given you the overview, but you can get more de in depth details about the scavenging. And always ensure that this scavenging is going to happen only in the case of a two stroke engine, okay, not in the case of a four stroke. Now we will see uh, uh, the engine valve timing diagram. Uh, okay, I will give more focus for the engine valve timing diagram today. Um, and this is very much important. Okay. Uh, so, we, uh, firstly, we need to read uh, how the engine valve opens and closes. Uh, I told that uh, in the first class, I told you you have the valve system where it will open and it will close such a way it will take the air in and it will expel the excess gas out. So, we will see the valve timing diagram for both two stroke and also the four stroke. Um, so, here uh, the engine can serve opens and closes uh, the valve at a specific interval and the timing uh, of the opening closing valves is always specified in degrees so here we have some degrees okay uh, 
and corresponding to that of the position of the engine piston. So engine wall timing is very much important uh, and it's very critical to process in the case of IC engine and it will also uh, ensure the, the power and torque of your engine. Uh, we will see uh, the wall timing diagram. Uh, first, I will complete the four stroke, then I will come back to the, the two stroke. Uh, this is the wall timing diagram for a four stroke uh, petrol engine. So, again, again I am going to divide uh, the engine, the four stroke uh, petrol engine, gasoline engine, into two types of engine. One is a low speed engine, another one is the high speed engine. Okay. Uh, you see here, uh, first we'll, I will complete. Uh, low speed engine so this is the tdc which is standing by the top dead center this is the bdc which is standing by the bottom dead center uh see you always need to remember one thing the inner inner wall opens uh, where the air enters into the air in the case of a diesel and in the case of uh, the petrol engine air and uh, fuel mixture okay you see here uh, the inlet valve opens. This is the first process. So, first process is the inlet valve opens. Okay. So, when the inlet valve opens, the air fuel mixture comes uh, into the, the combustion chamber. Okay. So, the, the, this is the TDC. You see here, uh, the inlet valve opens 10 degrees before top dead center. Okay. And then what happens is after the air fuel mixer comes, then again the inlet wall closes. This inlet wall will close 10 degree after before uh, 10 degree uh, before uh, bottom dead center. After after the bottom dead center, this is the after one. This is the before one. Okay. You you see when the piston moves from TDC to BDC, what happens is the case of gas and engine air fuel mixer comes in and uh, uh, the, and again, in, in the case of actual, this is in the case of uh, the theoretical wall timing diagram. We we normally tell uh, that the fuel mixer and the fuel air mixer comes uh, in the take uh, through the in that wall uh, at the TDC position, but it is not exactly happening at the TDC position because in the case of actual, uh, it will happen before and. Uh, even the wall timing opens, closes, it will ha happen either in after or before condition. Okay, it will not going to happen theoretically. Uh, so, in theoretically, we have seen uh, the piston moves from TDC to BDC where the inlet uh, intake flow comes, and then when the piston moves from uh, BDC to TDC, you get the compression stroke. But it's not going to happen exactly at the, the TDC or BDC. Okay, so it is going to happen either uh, before or after. We will see how it is going to happen. That is what uh, this diagram is all about. So um, I told you on uh, this TDC 10 degree before uh, TDC, you are going to open the inlet wall opens, and again the thrust in the inlet wall again is going to get closed so that it will arrest the incoming uh, fluid. Okay, and that is going to happen uh, the 10 degree uh, 10 degree after uh, BDC, which means when the piston moves from BDC to TDC. Okay, when the piston moves from uh, BDC to TDC, what happens? Compression is going to happen, okay? So the compression is going to happen. So this is second stage, so compression. Okay, and again, the, the compression is going to end, uh, okay, 5 degree after uh, after TDC. So you see here, uh, when the, and again, when, 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 the, when the inlet wall opens, or when the inlet wall closes, the exhaust wall is going to get uh, you see, sorry when the when the inlet wall closes you see here and the compression is going to happen because you are going to lock both inlet wall and also the exhaust wall okay so neither the exhaust 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 system exhaust wall will open or the inlet wall open so here you are giving a chance for the compression to take place so without any loss okay so or without any the pressure drop you see here the compression is going to happen such a way the piston moves from BDC to TDC uh, by compressing the, the system of uh, the air and the fuel in the case of the gasoline. Whereas in the case of diesel, you only the air gets uh, compressed. Okay, and uh, you see here then uh, you also have the spark, okay, the spark plug, okay. 
the spark plug uh, will happen, the, the ignition will happen 15 degree before uh, top dead center. Okay, when the spark happens, what happens? You are going to get the compression in the, the power stroke. Okay, uh, when the power stroke will happen, when the piston moves from TDC to PDC, uh, during this time, what happens is, uh, again, the exhaust valve will also get closed. The exhaust valve will close 5 degree after uh, TDC. And it, again, uh, you're, you're going to get the power stroke. Uh, you see the power stroke. And again, again, after the power stroke, when the piston moves from PDC to PDC, again, the exhaust, the exhaust stroke is the last stroke where uh, the exhaust valve opens so that uh, if the exhaust valve is not going to open what happens is the exhaust gas will not go out okay so you need to ensure that the exhaust valve is going to get open and uh, you see it, it opens uh, 25 degree before top before bottom uh, dead center okay and again uh, again and again when it is completing it is going to complete such a reward is going to get closed by the area of the top dead center. So under cycle, the cycle gets repeated. Uh, so I will repeat once again. I will repeat this again. Uh, you see this, listen this carefully. The piston moves from TDC to PDC during the impact stroke or impact, uh, impact system or during the impact stroke, which is the first stroke where the impact valve opens. And again, you see uh, here the impact valve opens 10 degree before top dead center. And this is the first uh, first stroke, and again after the, the first stroke, the inlet valve gets closed. Okay, and uh, this will happen uh, 10 degree after uh, bottom dead center. And next stroke is nothing but the compressed compression stroke, uh, where the, the it, it is compressing it as the fluid. Fluid is basically the air and uh, the fluid, and then. Uh, and then uh, and during the power stroke part, uh, and again uh, during the power stroke what happens the piston moves from PDC to PDC and again uh, the exhaust valve opens 25 degree before the bottom dead center and finally you need to close the exhaust valve exhaust valve because in again when only when you close the exhaust valve the inlet, inlet valve will open okay and the cycle continues uh, this is the example of a low speed engine of a gas cleaner when you come back to the high speed uh, engine of a gas cleaner, uh, let us see how it is working. Again, here uh, the degree will the degree will open, the, the value will change between uh, the engine configuration, and again it will also vary from uh, the engine uh, specification also. Okay, and you see here uh, the case of high speed engine of a gasoline, uh, the inlet valve opens uh, ten degree before. Uh, top dead center and again uh, the inlet wall closes TDD after uh, before uh, the foot uh, uh, after uh, bottom dead center and again uh, once uh, once this gets closed again you are going to get the compression stroke Okay, we are going to compress the system, and then uh, so in, in a, before the before uh, in the compression stroke only, you are also going to get you are going to ignite the, the spark because of that spark you are also going to get the power, and uh, the spark will happen 40 degree before top dead center, and you are going to get the power. Okay, the power uh, where the pressure shoots up. So the power stroke will end um, 55 degree before uh, bottom dead center. When the power stroke ends, what happens? The exhaust stroke will start, which means the exhaust valve will open, and the exhaust uh, valve will open 55 degree before uh, bottom dead center. Uh, and, the, and the exhaust valve will open, and continuously exhaust gas will be expelled out. And again, uh, the exhaust valve closes immediately uh, 20 degree after top dead center. When the exhaust valve closes, what happens is again the cycle repeats by making sure that the inlet valve opens uh, 40 degree uh, before uh, 
Topic Center and the Security Pitch. Next, we will see the four stroke uh, diesel engine. Okay. Um, here we are going to see only one configuration, not like low speed or high speed. Uh, see. So, here the, there are some abbreviations out there. IVO stands for inlet valve opens. IVC stands for inlet valve closes. EVO stands for exhaust valve opens. EVC stands for exhaust valve closing. And uh, FVW stands for uh, basically the injection system or the fuel valve opens uh, and the fuel valve closes. Uh, this is the, the basic abbreviation that we are going to use here in the case of a diesel engine. Okay, the inlet valve opens. Okay, 25 degree before top dead center. So when the inlet valve opens, all that was the basically the suction. Okay, this is suction, and then uh, the inlet valve means the suction means the inlet valve closes 30 degree after bottom dead center. So once the index of over, then what happens is the compression stop. Okay, in the case of diesel, only air comes in. Now you're going to compress the air. So the piston moves from VDC to DDC. Uh, and again, you see the compression stroke. The piston moves from VDC to DDC. And again, uh, before uh, before it reaching the TDC top dead center, you are going to uh, open the fuel injection. So here the fuel injection is going to start. Uh, the fuel valve open, which will happen 15 degree before uh, top dead, before top dead center. And uh, what happens uh, after that? If the fuel the fuel injection is going to stop, okay, our fuel valve is going to close. Okay, that will happen after 25 degree of the top dead center. Then what happens is expansion is going to take the the power stroke. Okay, and the power stroke uh, is going to go over only one and only if uh, the exhaust valve opens and you get a high pressure peak pressure peak temperature during the compression and it comes to the exhaust valve where you need to ex expel uh, the exhaust gas and uh, this will happen exhaust valve will open at 45 degree before bottom dead center okay and you need to go here and this is exhaust stroke and exhaust stroke is going to happen only if you complete exhaust valve closing this that will happen in degree after uh, after the center and that is a uh, you see this very important that's one more term very important term called valve overlapping so valve overlapping is that inlet part so it is this is the inlet valve opening okay which will happen before top dead center and uh, you see this is the exhaust valve closing okay and uh, which is nothing but the end of the exhaust valve closing okay which is nothing but the end of the exhaust valve closing once the exhaust valve closing over then again what happens is the inlet valve opens okay this process repeats so how i can going to define this valve overlap okay it is nothing but the time limit in terms of the time or in terms of degree so here it's basically a degree uh, the duration with respect to the in terms of degree of the inlet wall, the, the opening of the inlet wall against the, the exhaust wall getting closed, but again, you need to ensure that the wall period is being kept open during the wall overlapping stage. And uh, you need to have the value such a way it is too high. What happens is when it is too high, okay. There is a possibility you may end up with uh, you need to understand the concept and you need to write as well this okay it's very important okay and you also need to see the wall overlap you need to you need to mention all the criteria whatever that you mentioned um so in the case of uh, the, the four stroke petrol engine the wall overlap uh, is uh, again it is based on the inlet wall opening and then the exhaust wall closing what is the overall degree values and uh, you need to draw such a way um, 
what is there in the system or is there in the presentation you need to draw it in a very careful manner uh, and it is basically based on the, the four stroke what i have explained in the first class okay, this is the, the overview okay uh, so when i say here uh, the value again okay, it is not going to take place exactly okay it's not going to exactly take place at the dairy or it's not going to exactly take place to the dairy. So it will vary depending upon the, the engine configuration. So just to give you an overview, the engine that wall opens in the case of a first of diesel engine 10 to 15, 25 degree before top, top dead center. And the inlet wall is crossing between 30 to 40 degree. Okay, it can happen either 30 degree or at 50 degree. And that is going to happen after BDC. And again, the fuel injection is going to start. Uh, I told you this is happening during the compression stroke, uh, and that is going to happen before the top tension center. And during the, the, the power stroke, the, the fuel injection is going to stop. And uh, in between the injection starting and then the injection stopping, uh, you are giving the uh, time for the compression pressure to shoot up, um, and then the, the, the pressure temperature goes higher. And basically, compression is basically the injection and and uh, the fuel injection and the air gets mixed and you get the combustion and finally you get the, the exhaust valve opening uh, it will happen 30 to 45 degree before the bottom dead center and uh, finally you are going to close the exhaust valve for the last stop to get complete uh, it will happen 15 to 30 degree so this value see, see when i say uh, it is 15 degree the exhaust valve going to get closed it's not going to happen at exactly 15 degree so it, it, it will happen between 15 to 30 degrees. Okay. Uh, but what you need, when you are drawing the, the diagram, what is important is you need to uh, you need to look at the base value and then you need to draw. But when you are writing the conclusion, uh, you need to write like this. Now we will see the, the two stroke. Okay. So uh, inlet to, uh, inlet wall, exhaust wall we have in the case of a uh, four stroke, whereas in the case of uh, two stroke you don't have the wall. Okay. You have the port, one is inlet port and the one is exhaust port. You also have a transfer port, it is not mentioned here. Uh, transfer port is the one which will transfer the air and the fuel mixture to the combustion chamber, which is above the piston in the case of a gas engine. Whereas in the case of diesel engine, it will, uh, it will transfer the air to the combustion chamber above the piston and then. Uh, the air will mix with the, the injection fuel injection in the case of diesel and uh, basically there is one more port called transfer port and there is exhaust port is there which will expel the exhaust system out exhaust gas so inlet wall is similar to the inlet port and exhaust wall is similar to the exhaust port okay but you also have a transfer port um, and again what happens in the case of uh, two stroke okay here in the case of uh, two stroke, we have only two stroke where the in, in intake stroke and the, the compression stroke will happen at the first stroke, and uh, the compression expansion stroke or the power stroke and the exhaust stroke will happen at the second stroke. Whereas in the case of uh, the first stroke, we have the, uh, the suction stroke or the intake stroke, so compression stroke, separately, you have the expansion stroke or the power stroke separately under the exhaust stroke. So, here in the case of two stroke, what happens is the suction stroke and the compression stroke will form a first stroke called a, here it is mentioned as a compression stroke and the second stage is nothing but expansion stroke so here you have for every one revolution of the crankshaft you're going to get the power whereas in the case of a four stroke engine for every two revolution of the crankshaft you're going to get the power okay uh, you see here now the same procedure is also applied in the case of uh, Two stroke engine again, two stroke is also related to petrol and also gas and also the diesel. Uh, always remember that uh, in the case of a gasoline engine, you have uh, air and the fuel mixture which is coming into the inlet uh, during the, the intake stroke. Whereas in the case of a uh, diesel, only the, the medium is air. Okay, okay, first we will see uh, the, the system, like you know. Uh, the ignition starts or ignition occurs 20 degree before TDC. Okay. When the ignition happens, okay, which means here basically the, the, the air fuel mixer uh, 
So Yar is also going to happen. And also here, when, when ignition starts, what happens? The Yar ignites with, uh, reacts with the, the fuel, okay? So you, you also get the combustion, but the combustion gas is going to get uh, into the inlet, uh, basically the top dead center, uh, which it comes before before DDC, 20 days before DDC, it's nothing but the first stroke where you're going to compress also. Uh, and again, you see, doing this stroke, what happens? The inlet wall, inlet wall opens. And again, uh, and again, you see, the inlet wall opens. Uh, when you see, you're going to ignite the fuel, which means you are giving the chance for the ignition to take place. Okay. And uh, you see here the, the inlet wall, inlet port open, it means uh, the, you are allowing the exhaust, you are allowing the inlet system, basically the, the air mixer, air and fuel mixer, uh, and it will happen 35 degree before a bottom dead center. And uh, and once this opens, what happens, you are going to get a compression stroke. I told you, the compression stroke is the, the uh, first level of uh, stroke. And once the compression is going to take place, what happens is, uh, you are going to have uh, the expansion, okay? Um, where again, at the end of the expansion flow, um, the exhaust, uh, exhaust port, okay, the exhaust port will get open. Okay? The exhaust port will open uh, basically 43 degree before uh, uh, bottom dead center. And you also have uh, the, the system of uh, such a way you see here, uh, the inlet wall opening, inlet wall closing, inlet port. So here is basically the, the port. Inlet port opens and the inlet, inlet port closes. So inlet port opens, you see the inlet port opens uh, 35 degree before uh, bottom dead center. And again it closes 35 degree after bottom dead center. And so this is where uh, the first uh, level of stroke is going to get over. And uh, when, you, when you look at... Uh, uh, exhaust port uh, which is opening and closing you see the exhaust port opens uh, during the expansion stroke uh, which will happen uh, 40 degree before bottom dead center and uh, exhaust wall closes so that when the, when the exhaust wall closes what happens is again you are going to make sure that you are going to you have some period where the inlet wall inlet port will get open so the exhaust port will open uh, again uh, 40 de 43 degree of the uh, bottom dead center. And again, when I say degree, it is not going to be exactly at the 20 degree. You have some variation, okay? This variation is very much important. So when I say 40 degree or 35 degree, it's not going to happen exactly at 35 degree or 40 degree, but you have again the difference, uh, you have some uh, the gap according to the engine configuration, this will get varied. Uh, you see here, uh, you see this is very much important. So during the, the, the compression stroke, which is starting the first stroke, uh, where you have the exhaust port closing condition. Uh, and then the second stroke is nothing but the one where the exhaust port is going to get open uh, so that ex the exhaust gas goes out to the system. And uh, you have uh, the charging where you get the compression when uh, the transfer port opening and the transfer port closing okay basically you have a, i told you we have a transfer port okay when the transfer port opens okay, what happens is this will help the air and fuel mixer or the air mixer to go to reach the combustion chamber it is about a piston uh, when it is closing okay when it is closing the exhaust uh, port will open okay so during the charging during the combustion and uh, the transfer port which is, is helping the two stroke engine okay we will see the two stroke diesel engine now uh, we have completed the gas in now we'll see how the two stroke of a diesel engine comes into uh, so i have given the overall details in explanation also you will look into it in a more detailed manner so this is the port diagram of a, of a two stroke diesel engine the first again uh, you get the first uh, compression stroke next stroke is nothing but the expansion stroke and uh, scavenging but i told you you are going to expel uh, 
exhaust system, a removal of the burn gas to the exhaust. Uh, and here, during the time, what happens is you are also having the transfer port opening and transfer port closing. Uh, so transfer port opening will happen uh, during the charging system, which is nothing but the combustion process. And uh, once uh, the exhaust uh, uh, port opens, the, the transfer port gets closed. Uh, the same process is repeating here. So here in the case of uh, the diesel engine, you have the fuel valve opening and fuel valve closing. Whereas in the case of uh, the petrol engine, you have the ignition. Uh, you see the fuel valve opens uh, 15 degrees before TDC and uh, fuel valve closes 20 degrees after TDC. So basically it's nothing but the fuel supply. So once once the fuel supply is over, what happens? You're going to get the expansion, okay? Uh, where you get high things and uh, when you get the exhaust. Okay? But the first is nothing but the, the, the compression stroke where your, your inlet port opens. Um, and then the inlet port closes. Uh, this is the same cycle basically. So you have the detailed explanation. Uh, and again, this degree it is very, but uh, uh, but what you need to uh, when you're trying the diagram, you need to ensure that following the stages and accordingly you need to draw it. it can be drawn draw in a free hand sketch also. So the next important topic is uh, the engine valve or the we seen the engine wall overlap in the ball and diagram. So what is the overlap? Okay, uh, overlap is the one engine overlap is nothing but uh, the inlet. I told you it is between the inlet wall opening and then the exhaust wall closing basically. Okay, but uh, you listen this very carefully. So inlet wall opening and exhaust wall open, which means the exhaust wall is kept open. Till, till it is going to get closed, okay. Till it is going to get closed, okay. So, when the moment the exhaust wall closes, uh, you are not you, the inlet wall opens again. The moment the exhaust wall closes, the, the opening of the exhaust wall are going to end. So, here it is nothing but the, the, the period between the inlet wall opening and the exhaust wall, which are kept in open state. I told you the exhaust wall will open during the exhaust stroke. Okay, uh, up to what moment it is going to get open? Okay, that period you are going to have it as a roll up period. And you see here, uh, uh, this inlet wall opening and exhaust wall will happen at the same time. And doing so, this will happen at the end of the exhaust stroke. And again, this will also happen at the beginning of the intake stroke. So if your intake wall opens before the top tube center, and your exhaust wall closes after TDC, uh, you may have overlap. Uh, but uh, it is not that uh, you need to def you, you should define uh, such a way the period of wall opening condition between the to the top of the exhaust that is called as overlap. But but looking at the diagram, you may feel that uh, it is nothing but the the period between the inlet of the wall opening. Uh, before TDC we have seen and to the top of uh, the exhaust wall closing after TDC. Uh, but but currently speaking, it is nothing but the period of time where uh, the inlet wall opening and the exhaust wall uh, opening are going to happen at the same time. That is the, the correct meaning. Uh, but we cannot uh, have the, the diagramatic representation. So what 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 we are going for a diagramatic representation is in between the inlet wall opening and then the exhaust wall closing. Exhaust wall closing is starting to valve overlapping, but you, you have to ensure that before this exhaust wall closing, the exhaust wall is kept open. Okay, it means the time duration between the, the inlet wall opening and the exhaust wall opening at the same time they call this as valve overlapping. So we will see that with the help of a graph. Um, see the piston moves from TDC to BDC, BDC to DDC. Uh, you have a two stroke or four stroke, okay, irrespective of the, the stroke engine. Um, what happens is you see here, uh, th this will happen over 720 degree of the crank of rotation, and you have the wall, wall lift. Uh, so, wall overlap will happen only because of four stroke, whereas uh, you don't have a, a system called a port, port overlap because of the, uh, the two stroke engine. Uh, this overlap uh, is basically, even though we, this overlap is also applicable for a two-stroke engine, but normally uh, 
we don't have we don't have the balls there and again uh, we are going to concentrate more towards uh, uh, the four stock engine respect to the wall overlap and you see here uh, this is nothing but the wall overlap period where the inlet wall and then the exhaust wall are kept open at the same time the higher the degree and the lower the degree will also influence the, the power and then the torque of the engine so you should kept in such a way the optimum level of uh, degree should be maintained uh, between the exhaust stroke and then the, the exhaust wall opening and then the intake wall opening so the, the, this is the location uh, where it will contribute or it will determine what is the the power overlap period for your engine in other words the wall overlap is nothing but both inlet wall and excess wall are open for a short time okay uh, it's not that uh, excess wall closing or inlet wall opening so it is nothing but both inlet wall opening and excess wall opening at the same time uh the period required is uh, a wall overlap period okay So just uh, uh, we have covered the scavenging and then to force we have seen, seen the wall stroke wall timing diagram of the two stroke CAS engine and wall overlap we have seen we have also seen the scavenging and uh, just uh, all these processes are already there uh, okay uh, I also explained you the volumetric efficiency uh, and again the four it's the basics again. You can look all these details uh, in a book called John B. Haywood in the chapter number six. Uh, now I will also see, I will also give you the overview of just a graph alone. Uh, then I will go with uh, the, the free and four in a combustion. You will see the gas exchange process uh, basically. Um, is, all these details are given in the John B. Haywood. So you have seen what is called uh, the volume efficiency, it's basically the mass flow rate of the air. Uh, but you have different uh, the values, you have different, and look for more details into that book. Uh, you see, basically the volumetric efficiency of the engine is basically affected uh, by various uh, parameters, uh, and also based on the engine design, and also based on the operating variables of the engine. Uh, the volumetric efficiency of the engine is also uh, depending upon the compression ratio of the engine, engine speed, RPM, and how you are going to design uh, the inlet and the exhaust manifold and the port design. Basically, uh, you need to design such a way uh, that it's not that it's a smooth flow of air to intake uh, system uh, so that you can increase the volumetric efficiency. And uh, you, you see, basically, the lift, wall lift. Basically, the, the geometry is very much important. Okay, so the wall wall overlaps also should not be higher. Also, there is I think some question here come uh, will wall wall overlap will affect the uh, engine performance? Yes, it will affect, uh, but but you need to ensure that it is not going to the higher level. Okay, uh, because you, obviously the wall overlap will be there. You can't avoid it. Okay, and because you need to have some time where you need to give some. Uh, uh, the time period between uh, the valve opening and the closing. So um, you can't avoid that obviously, but you should ensure that it's not going to yes or not going to the higher side. When it is going to go the higher side, then it will affect the performance. Uh, basically, the power and torque issue you might undergo. So that is what the answer for that. And uh, there may be the other reasons how we can uh, look for increasing the volume efficiency. And this volumetric efficiency is also based on the fuel type, what you're going to use, what is the air fuel ratio. Because you have lean mixture, rich mixture, and again, stoichiometric mixture. So, according to this, uh, your volumetric efficiency also will go higher or lower. Uh, so, but again, you need to ensure that you're going to have higher volumetric efficiency. When you have higher volumetric efficiency, obviously, your compression efficiency will be higher, which means your mechanical efficiency will also be higher. Uh, there's a reason where uh, it's also based on fuel type. I told you, uh, you have two type of fuel, one is gas and a diesel. So the volumetric of the diesel is going to be higher um, than that of uh, gasoline because here the only air comes in the case of uh, diesel, whereas air fuel mixture comes in the case of a gasoline. 
and it also depends on the fuel type okay and this volume peak efficiency is going to be higher than this loss i have the influence on the mechanical efficiency and also the combustion efficiency of air engine so this is the volume peak efficiency of uh, the idle cycle so all these details are given in the chapter six you can have it for your reference uh, it is more of uh, derivations but you need to understand the, the formula the basic formula is nothing but the mass flow rate of the air to the top uh, the displacement volume yeah, here rho is nothing but the density of the air uh, okay the equivalence ratio is nothing but uh, the air fuel ratio and to that of uh, pressure ratio um, so that here it is nothing but the ratio of air inlet pressure uh, to that of uh, the mixture of the inlet pressure versus uh, uh, the equivalence ratio basically the PLR ratio uh, this will also vary with respect to uh, different uh, uh, composition of your fuel okay so your fuel okay it can be a gasoline or a diesel is having different composition of carbon hydrogen and oxygen so depending upon the different configuration of your fuel uh, your pressure ratio will vary uh, according to that your according to the fuel air ratio and this will also have the influence on the volumetric efficiency of your engine and also the uh, and also the, the flow of gases into the engine um, See now uh, there is a graph which, which indicates uh, the, the x-axis as the pressure ratio. Uh, so here the, the, the pressure ratio again is based on exhaust pressure to the top the inlet pressure. Uh, P stands for exhaust pressure, P A stands for inlet pressure, which is nothing but the pressure ratio. Uh, and uh, this is nothing but the volumetric efficiency of the engine. Okay. So higher the pressure ratio and uh, you also have uh, your, your volumetric efficiency is also going to get uh, uh, decreased okay and you're going to see what is what is your compression ratio also okay you're going to have the mapping between the compression ratio and then uh, the volume volumetric efficiency considering the pressure ratio so you can also determine what should be the compression ratio for your engine okay so this 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 graph will also help you to find out uh, the selection of the compression ratio so higher the compression ratio what will happen is uh, you, you have uh, the knocking effect in the case of a gasoline engine uh, so it's always important to have the right amount of uh, selection of the compression ratio for your engine so this graph will help to consider the system having the, the proper amount of uh, compression ratio uh, it is the graph showing the speed versus uh, the delta p plus a drop uh, so here uh, this is considering all the friction loss i told you you have different type of friction uh, basically when the engine is running at higher rp okay uh, so this friction loss will have the friction power that will also influence uh, the brake power and then the indicator power of your engine uh, Indicator power is the one you are going to get the power from the cylinder, say the cylinder, and the power is the one you are going to get from the. You are going to measure it from the crankshaft, out, outlet of the crankshaft. This uh, this nothing but uh, this graph indicates the pressure loss in the system of a four-stroke SA engine. Uh, they are uh, determined under the, the steady flow, steady flow condition. The flow is considered to be steady. Okay. Uh, and uh, here they assume that the, uh, the stroke is 89 and 4 is 84. Uh, this is just a graph. Uh, the detailed explanation are given in that. Uh, can be able to can look into it. See, this uh, volumetric efficiency is based on the manifold pressure, inlet manifold pressure, so the air, air flow basically. And again, the exhaust uh, manifold also, because you get the exhaust pressure from the exhaust manifold. So the ratio between the exhaust the pressure to the top inlet pressure you call that is a pressure ratio. So I told you based on the pressure ratio you are also going to have the volumetric efficiency based on that you are also going to have the, the compression ratio uh, selection. And, uh, it, and again you see based on this uh, the pressure variation uh, you see here uh, you need to see how your engine 
engine performance is going to happen considering the engine or uh, engine torque. Uh, you see here uh, the graph showing uh, the, the inlet pressure versus the exhaust manifold pressure. Uh, so you see different RPM, different RPM or different speed, and again different torque is also given here. Only they mention uh, uh, the speed in RPM 1200, 1600. Uh, when we also look at when the speed increases, what happens is when the speed increases, the exhaust manifold pressure gets increased. Okay, so higher the speed, the, the pressure is going to be higher at the exhaust side. So when the when there is a, when there is high when there is higher in the exhaust manifold pressure, what happens is the pressure ratio is going to be higher. When there is pressure ratio higher, what happens is your volumetric efficiency is going to be higher. So higher the volumetric efficiency. What happens? Obviously, your compression ratio is also going to be higher. When uh, that is the reason, uh, you also have the compression ratio higher in the case of diesel engine, uh, where it will go beyond the 15 or 20, but it is not, uh, it is lesser in the case of a gasoline engine. So, it is having the indirect comparison, you can also correlate between the pressure ratio, the volumetric efficiency, and the compression ratio. Uh, you have, you can look into the details more about this in the case of uh, the John B. Hayward book. I'm just rushing it. Uh, okay, you see uh, again that is uh, uh, the variation with respect to the engine speed or the engine speed with respect to the mean percent speed of the engine, and then uh, the efficiency. Okay, uh, basically the volumetric efficiency. So you see here the diesel is considered to be the high volumetric efficiency considering the different mean percent speed of the engine compared to that of uh, the spark engine. Yeah, again, this uh, volumetric efficiency will also have uh, parameters that will determine uh, the, the volumetric efficiency of the engine. If you have the backflow or if you have the restriction to the air, your volumetric efficiency will have will, will reduce. Okay? And you need to do some fine tuning by doing some design so that your volumetric efficiency can, can go higher. And you have some uh, the pressure effect. So you need to arrest, uh, the, you need to do some fine tuning to, to into the uh, RAM effect we call. Uh, and if you do this, uh, your volumetric efficiency is also going to be higher. What is called a RAM effect? We see that. Okay? Um, so it is basically uh, basically the pressure. So you have the inlet pressure, basically the air, which is coming to the inlet manifold. Okay, and again, it will vary with respect to the, the different cylinders. It's not going to be uniform. Okay, so suppose we have three cylinder, or if we have four cylinder, or if we have two cylinder, the, the variation of the pressure will happen according to the different the, the configuration. Um, so what is perspective of the, the variation in the, the, the pressure of the, the cylinder again? Uh, Again, the flow is sometimes it's going to it's not going to be steady, okay. Uh, and according to that, what happens will also have the influence on the volumetric efficiency, and uh, this will also have uh, the inertia because of the higher uh, RPM. It also develops the inertia into the system. Uh, so, what 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 is the advantage of this uh, the effect called the RAM effect is that uh, it's not it's not that uh, it is, not, it is going to have a high influence on the volumetric efficiency it will have but you see i told you you have the inlet valve opening and inlet valve closing respect to the volume in the air on the scene so you see that the last important uh, and the inlet valve is going to get closed somewhere 40 to 60 degree after bottom dead center uh, Is you take the part advantage to, to, to go for a, a, the, the RAM phenomena, the RAM effect, where uh, you are also going to determine uh, the amount of uh, the variation with respect to the order parameters, considering uh, the inertia, speed, pressure, uh, and uh, and also the overall uh, system configuration, with respect to uh, the, the combustion parameter also. 
and again here it long effect is not only to the combustion but also here as we deal with volumetric efficiency basically we are going to deal only with respect to uh, the inlet system okay inlet system is basically the intake manifold how much how, how the air is going to get flow into the system very smoothly without any restriction with proper velocity with proper run and you also have a throttle wall okay you have the throttle wall which will open the quantity of required amount of air into the intake system so this will help actually so you need to ensure that you are also having the proper fine tuning of the ram effect so that your volumetric efficiency is going to um, be according to the, the, the directions is there in the specification uh, so these are all the different graphs that you can see it uh, basically it's all self-explanatory so you see the flow how the flow is going to go through the walls we have inlet wall and exhaust wall this is the configuration of the wall uh, this is the wall diameter okay uh, and, uh, this is the wall c basically this is a wall seat width this is the seat angle and the, the, even the, the, the system configuration is very really important and this is, uh, this is the stem diameter for the wall we have the inner seat diameter called d uh, Wall geometry and uh, you see these are different types, different uh, methods how you design the walls. You have different specification. Okay, you need to have sometimes you need to have the largest possible radius so that uh, the amount of uh, air which is coming in can be can be made uh, with more area. And you need to have some uh, the portion. Okay, the portion should be lesser. Uh, you see, uh, it's not quoted too high, okay? It should be uniform. It is the wall when it is lifting, okay? We have low lift and also high lift. In these things, you can, you can look into it in a more detailed manner. I also explained about the scavenging. Uh, we have the scavenging. You are the loop scavenging. You see how it forms the loops, and you also have the uniform. Uh, Scavenging system. Each each system is having different advantages, disadvantages. Uh, the details also given in the book. You can look into it. I mean, it is very much uh, all the formulas uh, very much important. And see on what basis uh, the modeling of uh, the scavenging parameters are being done based on uh, the air flow rate and also the mass flow rate and. Uh, you have uh, charging efficiency percentage, considering that uh, the delivery ratio and uh, the, the efficiency of charge, uh, scavenging also, how it will vary. You can look into all these things. So, we have seen the wall flow, how the flow of the uh, system comes to the walls. And similarly, they also given the flow through ports. You have again uh, the port is of uh, having it, it is of circular shape, square shape, uh, and how how you are going to design the port is also very important. So you have seen the low speed and high speed engine for the four stroke uh, petrol engine. So here, uh, the case of high speed engine, the compression stroke is less. Uh, yeah, so you are you are comparing this with uh, the compression. So here, um, the exhaust, or sorry, the the inlet wall is going to uh, close only after 50 degree after the bottom dead center. Whereas here, it's going to close uh, 10 degree after the bottom dead center. Yes, uh, the, the stroke is going to be yes again. 
when the speed is higher, what happens is uh, you cannot control uh, the air fuel mixture, okay? The compression you can, can easily compress it, okay? and again, uh, that is easy. But it is very difficult when this, you assume that uh, uh, you have the nose which is acting as an inlet for your human body. When the amount of air is coming very highly, okay, what happens is uh, you, you breathe more, okay, and again it is very difficult for you uh, to, to close it immediately. Okay? Because even if you try to close, because the air is coming frequently, it's very fastly. That's the reason when, when you're going for a high speed engine, the amount of air which is entering into the system. So in the case of petrol, it's basically air plus fuel. And in the case of diesel, again, uh, it's basically the, the air. And again, even this this valve configuration is also very with respect to the different speed of the engine. I have categorized only with respect to the petrol engine, low speed, high speed, even for a diesel application. When the engine is, the vehicle is running, sipping the vehicle. The vehicle is running in highway condition. Uh, this configuration will vary. Yes, of course, when the speed is going to be higher, uh, the compression slope is 